guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Shout out to my buddy Chris, the scumbag who uh, loves Resident Evil and talks about it constantly and makes me play these stupid games. Uh, <laughs> Resident Evil 4. So, um, <clears throat> admittedly, I'm not the huge, the, the hugest Resident Evil fan. I do like them. I prefer Silent Hill. Um, I've never beaten the first Resident Evil, though I have the HD remake or remaster or whatever on Xbox One. So I will dive into that eventually. And I've beaten the remaster of 2, 3, Biohazard, Village, and at one point I beat 5, but I don't remember it at all. And I'm playing through 6 a little bit with my friend Bobby. So I picked this one up. I heard it was great. This is not the new remake, or remaster I should say, excuse me, that is completely overhauled and done in pretty much a whole new game. Um, this is the original like GameCube 360 ports, PS2, but I guess souped up a little bit, 60 frames per second, I think, and they cleaned up some of the textures. So it definitely looks um, older. Um, there's really nothing that you look at and go, wow, that looks phenomenal. Everything looks okay, but it's, you know, probably a, whatever, almost 20-year-old game at this point. Uh, this is this was released in 2016, I believe, and um, it has some of the, I guess, add-ons on it. So once you beat the game, there's like separate ways and different things you can play through, which uh, I most likely will not play. Uh, this is when the series went from straight survival horror with you know hoarding weapons and, and action, some action elements to more action-oriented. Uh, lots of shooting, lots of hordes, things of that nature. And uh, I liked it. I didn't love it. My favorites are still Biohazard and The Village. I think that this series is very conducive to first person. I really like that. Uh, especially because it did get kind of more action oriented, but uh, it is pretty fun. And I had some good moments. A lot of it were, was repetitive, and the game is way too long. This game was, I think, like 20 hours, it, something around there, 16 hours. It, it could have been cut in half. It was just, there was points that I was just like, this is just such filler at this point. And I feel like I'm just running from A to B, picking up a note, you know, seeing some cutscene about. This mut mutagen that's infecting the main character and and who and whoever else and you're you're there to save I think it's the president's daughter, so you have some missions where you're hand holding her and running around and trying not to get her killed, and telling her when to stay and when to follow you. So it has a lot of old fashioned elements that I don't like anymore in my gaming that I think sort of uh, hamper games. But it's still a good game, and some people think it's the best Resident Evil, and I, maybe eventually I'll get to that remaster, but it's just such a lengthy game that I really don't have the desire to. Um, I know I sound like I'm shitting on it, but I'm not. I liked it. It was good, and I could see back when this came out, like, people flipping, you know, out over this game, because it's so uh, drastically bigger and different than the other prior Resident Evils, in a sense. Uh, but it didn't age particularly well. Uh, the graphics are okay, uh, the, obviously the voice acting is goofy like always from the old games, it's just way too long. Uh, there are a lot of like cheesy and, and um, elements to the game and things that are annoying, I would say. There are things that are kind of annoying, but um, there's some cool characters and bad guys, uh, there's some parts where you have to do certain things and certain puzzles to you know, fight the bad guys. So, again, it's a third-person shooter survival horror game, but leaning more towards the arm of um, action survival horror, not straight survival horror. Uh, the puzzles are, are pretty linear and straightforward. There's nothing too uh, crazy about them. It's like matching boxes and colors and finding keys and stuff like that. A lot of cool weapons. There's a rifle and shotgun, and you can upgrade each of the shotguns and the rifles at that Merchant who is very memorable with the mask on his face and the big the big trench coat and you know, what are you buying? What are you selling? So he's cool. I like meeting up with him and it always felt kind of like a Dark Souls reprieve when you ran into him with a typewriter because you're just, you know, on, on the brink of death and then you make it to the next save point and you can buy some stuff from him and save. Um, so overall, I liked it. I, again, I don't think it aged particularly well, but it's definitely a good game um, and I could see why when it came out... People adored it. So um, this one I probably won't go back to. I'm eventually going to play through 5 again, hopefully with a friend online, because I think that one's co-op. And 6 was, I think, sort of uh, built sort of for co-op. So I've been playing 
threw that one in spurts, as I had said. So yeah, it was pretty good. I'm glad I'm done with it, though, because in the end there, I was just like, kind of had enough of this. I brought it on vacation with me, and I played a couple hours, and my dad watched me, and he was kind of chiming in, and it was fun. Uh, just not one of my favorites. So let me know, guys, what you think of the old, um, I don't know if it's a remaster, I guess port uh, to Xbox One of Resident Evil 4. I thought it was decent, just not my favorite in the series. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.